Recently, I've really been praying a lot into the subject of favor because it's so powerful. And I noticed that concerning Jesus, it says that he actually grew in favor or he increased in favor with both God and man. And that's powerful because not only can you receive favor, but you can increase in it. You can accelerate. And I want you to get ready to receive an increase of accelerated favor in your life. Now, what happens when you're increased in favor? Well, one of the definitions of favor is that, is that you'll be approved of and you'll be liked. In other words, when, when people look at you, they'll think, oh, what a great person. Isn't that neat? Or even the things that you put your hand to, they'll approve of it. Because when you have favor, it also touches what you put your hand to. It touches what you're involved in. And so um, favor is awesome in that way. People will approve of you and they will like you. Now, I don't know about you, but I have, I have experienced rejection and favor. I like favor better. I've had people love me and I've had people hate me. I like love better, you know. So um, think about living your life just increasing in people's approval and having them like you. Now, we don't live for the approval of man. We live for the approval of God. But he says that he'll increase favor that will give us approval with, with, with man. You know, God's favor, it's undeserved and unmerited. We don't deserve it. It's just given to us. Amen? So he can give you a favor that people will like you. They don't even know why they like you. I had a, a, a flight attendant uh, say that to me one time. Said, I just like you, you know? And uh, they had kept staring at me throughout the flight. And they said, you know, there's just something about you. I really like you. Tell me something about yourself, you know? So I actually got to share the gospel uh, with her because um, God gave me favor with her. Another definition of favor is uh, when you have favor, uh, you are given privilege. There's just privilege that is given to you that, that isn't necessarily given to other people. And, 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 and that's really fun. I remember uh, one time when we were over in Africa with Dr. Bensonita Hosa, and we were in the Governor's Day Parade, and we got to go in his limousine and go right up to the governor's, governor's booth. It was a privilege to sit in that booth. No one else was allowed to sit in that booth. And then we got invited into the, the green room afterwards and got to prophesy over the governor and different dignitaries because it was a special privilege. We were favored to do that and to be invited into that uh, realm. So when you have God's undeserved, unmerited favor, it starts activating supernaturally in your life. So it sets you up for things like that to happen. It also includes the um, uh, benefits and gifts so that when you're favored, people want to benefit you and they want to gift you. They want to bless you. They send you special little cards and gifts and everything. And it's just so sweet. You know, the favor of God is sweet. I was just in an airport the other day and I walked by a store and it had all these outfits in the store that I knew would just look fabulous on, on a particular friend of mine that I favor. I favor her. And, um, you know, I like her in other words. But I liked her so much, I thought, oh my gosh, you would love this store. Everything in it just has her name on it. So I went inside the store and I had fun. I was pulling things off the, the racks. I thought, oh my gosh, this would look so cute on her. And I ended up buying her a gift of a beautiful outfit because I, I just like her. I favored her. And um, that's how it kind of goes. You know, people are compelled to give blessing and you're compelled to give blessing to others when favor, when the favor factor is in the equation. And another definition of favor is, is when you're given an advantage or a, an, an unfair advantage, we call it. Like, for example, when we were down in Tijuana, Mexico years ago, and we were starting an outreach center, and we had people coming for a outreach within one month. And uh, so we had to get a, a place. We needed a minimum of a three-bedroom condo in order to, to put four beds in each room and have enough to facilitate the 12 people that were coming on outreach. And so we just thought we were going to get one. But when we arrived, we found out that there was an 18-month to two-year waiting list to get a rented place. 
we thought, oh no, what are we going to do? And we went into prayer for a couple of days and then our uh, team went into a uh, laundromat to do their laundry on the third night and took their guitars with them and they're singing, you know, uh, gospel music and that and, and doing some outreach while they're getting their laundry done. And the owner of the laundromat was there and he said, wow, you know, I love that. I'm a Christian too. And he says, I like it that you're coming and entertaining all the people that are coming to get their laundry done. And he said, uh, what are you doing here and how did you get here? And, um, and so they said, well, we're here to open up an outreach center, but we need a place and we don't have a place. And he said, well, I'm a landlord. I have um, actually a three bedroom house coming up available next week because the people gave me their notice they're leaving. But someone's been on that waiting list for for over 18 months already. And so I have to give them, I promise that they would have it. They were the ones that were in, in line for it. So I have to keep my word. He said, but if they don't want it, I'll give it to you. Even though there was other people after them, he didn't promise those other people the place. He said, I didn't promise it to them. I just promised it to this one couple. So um, he called them and they said, yeah, they still wanted it. And, and uh, so they gave the deposit. And so we went back and we were praying and saying, oh God, could you favor them with even a better place or, or open up something else for us right away? And the next day we get a call back from the landlord and he said, this is strange. They just called me and said that they got a call, a sudden invitation from Guadalajara for a job opportunity that was way better than what they had here. And they're moving, so they canceled the place. So he said, you can have it. And so we got our first place. And then within the next year, we got three other places given to us like that, right when we needed them. And we didn't have to wait for 18 months or two years. We got them right away. Now, when we were telling some, some um, uh, friends of ours that we got to know in, in Mexico, they said, that's impossible. How could you get that kind of advantage? Well, it's the favor of God. When the favor factor is at work within your life, it is just like, you know, it just opens doors of opportunities. You know, it gives you platforms that you never dreamt possible. Gifts come to you, job opportunities, raises, you know, all kinds of things can come to you because of the favor factor. Now, as many of you know, um, I have a coaching course, a personal growth coaching course on the favor factor because I want everyone to enjoy the favor of God. And so um, you can order that online and you can get the download of it. We have um, four uh, uh, sessions of it plus the worksheets and the notes that go with it to help you get that favor right deep on the inside of your heart. I want you to enjoy the favor of God. And so you can order that um, online on our xpmedia.com store and, um, and get filled with favor. And I teach you in that course how, how you can um, look at areas of your life where you've been rejected in the past and overcome. How you can supernaturally receive of the blessing of God's covenant that promises you favor. Not only are you promised favor, but the increase of favor. In that, uh, that CD teaching and in the workbook and everything, we go through all kinds of different activations for you so that you can grow in favor. And we give you 10 principles on what you can put into action in your life. And you can teach your children these too so that they can grow up and know the favor of God. The favor of God is going to open up doors for us. You know, I wouldn't want to go evangelizing on the streets without knowing that I'm favored because you can have a great message, but if you don't have favor, no one's going to listen to it. And so the favor factor, grow in favor and be blessed. And remember this above all else, God loves you with an everlasting love. He really, really does. So go pass his favor of love around to those that you meet today.